Hello YouTube, for this video I'm going to show you two different ways of moving our player around as well as keeping the player on the screen and then we're also going to create a macro. So let's go ahead and get started with this fresh project. I have added a font, some sounds and sprites which will be linked below as well as flow canvas and to get started let's go ahead and add our player to the hierarchy and rename it to player. And we're going to add a few components. The first will be a box collider 2D, then a rigid body 2D, and we're going to set the gravity scale to zero so our player doesn't fall off the screen, and then we're going to add the flow script controller, which adds flow canvas to our game, and we're going to bind this to the player game object, so we're going to click bound, close the welcome window, and dock the canvas. And here we're going to add a way to read the horizontal and vertical input. So we're just going to search for input, choose input access. There it is. We have flow and the horizontal and vertical input already by default. So we're going to go ahead and create a new vector to store the horizontal and vertical inputs. And you can just connect the nodes together. And to disconnect, you can right click on one of the node ports. And now we're going to search for rigid body 2D velocity, and we'll choose to set the velocity. All right, and self means it's applying to the current game object's rigid body 2D, which is fine. We'll just plug in our new vector 2. And we're going to set this to do it on fixed update since we're working with rigid body 2D. And that is the minimum we need to move our player around. It's a little slow, but you can see it's working. And the yellow flow means it's currently active. All right, and to move our player around a little faster, we're going to add a float variable called speed. Let's go to new system and float. We'll call it speed, and we'll set a value of 10 for now. And we're going to drag it to the canvas and choose to get speed. And now if we want to multiply the vector 2 by the speed, so if we search for multiply, you'll see a vector 2 and float combination. Now we just plug in our vector 2 and our speed value, and then output that to the set velocity. And there we go. All right, so next I'm going to show you how to move the player using add force, which will look a lot different than velocity. So if we search for a rigid body 2D, we'll find the add force, and we'll just plug everything into that node instead. And now you'll see our player gradually accelerates and kind of floats around more compared to set velocity. So it is more realistic, not as responsive as before. But if we want to stop our player from constantly drifting around the screen, we need to set a linear drag. So you see that when we let go, the player will eventually stop. But for this type of game, I'm going to stick with set velocity. So I do need our player to be a bit more responsive. And to keep the player on the screen, I'm going to clamp the movement of the player. So we need to determine the X and Y values. So if we drag our player over to about the edge of the screen, we'll get our X. And if we drag it to the top, we'll get our Y. And I'm going to store that in a variable for us. And rather than using four float variables, I'm just going to create a vector 4, which conveniently stores four values. 
just keeps the variable count down. If I search for vector 4, I'm going to store the x and x and y and the y and the z and w, which sounds a little confusing. And I'm going to call it boundaries. Alright, and to clamp our player movement, I need to get our player's position first. So if I search for transform, I mean, we can use get position, and ultimately we want to set the position. And in between, we need to clamp the movement. So in order to use our position vector 3, we need to extract the vector 3. So if I search for extract after dragging out of the port, I can expose x, y, and z. And now I want to clamp the x and y, so if I search for clamp, and then duplicate it for the y, I can plug those values in. Now to get the min and max I need to get our vector4 variable and also extract that. Expose x, y, z, and w and just plug those in to the clamp nodes. All right, now if I create a new vector 3 to store everything, you can just plug in all the values for x, y, and z, which does not change. And we'll plug that into the value. And we want to clamp on update instead of fixed update. And if we hit play, We'll see that our player is confined to just the screen area. Left, bottom, right, top, all looks good. And if we change our movement back to add force, there is a problem which I want to show you. If we keep an eye on the rigid body 2D info, if you look at velocity, if I move our player to the left and I hold down the left button, he still contains that velocity. So when I want to move to the right, it takes a couple seconds and vice versa. And that's definitely not what we want in this kind of a game. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. If we first take clamp off, I disconnected the update. I'm going to add a new game object. I'm going to call it boundaries and to cancel out that velocity we need to have a collision so all I need to do is add four box collider 2d's around the edges of the screen so I can drag out the X to get it about the size that I want and move it up And if I copy this component and then paste the component as new, all I have to do is flip the Y value. And I'll do the same thing for the left and right sides of the screen. Copy component, paste as new. This time I'll flip the X value for the offset. All right, so let's make sure we're not clamped. I've hit play. Go back to the player's rigid body, 2D info, and look at the velocity. You see that when I hit one of those box colliders, it goes to zero. And I can instantly move the other direction if I want to. 
And that's exactly what we would want if we were keeping this method of movement. But like I said, I'm going to stick with velocity because I want the player to be more responsive. But I just wanted to show you a method of using the add force if you wanted to use it for your game. All right, I'm going to disable boundaries and just make sure everything works again with clamp and velocity. And everything is looking good. I'm just going to kind of tidy these up a little bit. You can see how quickly things can get a little bit cluttered using the canvas. So I'm going to put all of this into a group. If you hold the control button and drag, you can highlight and drag around the objects you want to group. Let's give it a meaningful name, like clamp movement. I'm going to do the same thing with the nodes below. I'll just call this movement. Now I'm going to show you how to create a macro for the clamp movement. It'll keep our code a lot cleaner and just look a lot nicer. So if you right click, go to macros, create new. You create a new folder called macros. And I'll call this clamp movement. All right, and let's double click on that macro to get into it. And new macros only give you an in and an out node. So we're going to add some inputs to make this useful. We're going to add a vector three as well as a vector four. And the vector three input will be the player's position. And our vector four will be the boundaries that we set earlier. And the output will just be a vector three. I'm just giving our ports some meaningful names. All right. Oops. All right, let's go ahead and extract the vector three as well as the vector four. This should all look very familiar since we just did it. We're going to, going to clamp the X and Y values. We're going to plug everything in just like we did before. Create a new vector three. Plug in the X, the Y, and the Z. And then plug that into the out. All right. Now let's click on player flow script to get back and we'll click on clamp movement, hit refresh ports, and that'll show us all of the inputs and outputs we created. And before we delete everything, let's go ahead and plug everything in to make sure it works first. So we'll plug in the player position, boundaries, and output the clamped position and click play to make sure it all looks okay. All right, we're looking good. All four sides look all right. Now we can go ahead and remove these extra nodes. And we can tidy this up even more. And the good thing about macros is once you create them, They'll be available in the macros menu for any game object you want to use them for, any canvas. 
If you right click, go to macros, there's clamp movement. It's just a really nice way to keep your project nice and clean, uh, a lot less cluttered, otherwise your canvas can get a little crazy. Alright, that covers it for the first video. In the next video we're going to go over how to make our players shoot some lasers, so it should be pretty cool. I hope to see you then.